Okay, so the first thing I want you to do for CSE, since um, not everybody has access to PLTW right now, even through Clever, is I want you to type MIT App Inventor, and it should come up if you're, especially if you're on a desktop. Okay, so MIT App Inventor. You'll get this Google page, and we always use Chrome. Okay, we always use Chrome, so don't use don't use Microsoft. Don't um, we're always using Chrome. Okay, you're gonna click this link. Okay, so you're gonna click on MIT App Inventor. And you're going to get this screen. So I already have a, have an account. Um, so when you get in here, you are going to, what we're going to do is, what we're going to do is create apps. So if you have this big orange button, click create apps. Now, you'll notice that I have a whole bunch of stuff. This is from day one of me using it. I got a lot of things in here. Okay. So what you're going to do, you're going to get a, you're going to get a startup screen and it's going to give you a little preview. You can watch that. There's a box on your startup screen that will say, uh, don't show again. Okay. All right, so you'll get this little startup screen on here that'll be about like this. And you'll just say, you'll watch the little video and then you'll say, don't show again. And then that's when you'll end up with this screen. But all of this, you're not going to have all of this. This is mine plus my students' work that I grade. Okay, so this is all from the past. So if you get your little, if you get a pop-out screen, like I'm looking right now, uh, there's a couple of people that have a pop-up screen. So look through that. There should be an option that says um, don't show again or continue. There you go. And then you, because if you check that little box that says don't show again, then that introduction screen is not going to pop up. So now you may end up with another oblong screen pop out that's got three little sections on there. Just pay attention to what those three little sections are and then click the one that says either continue or don't show again and close that one out and then get your blank screen. What you're going to do is you're going to click start new project. You're going to get a project name. Always name your projects with the activity, your, your last name, first initial, the activity number and your class period. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So your last name, your first initial, and this is activity one, 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 and then your class period, A1. Now, what if you put spaces in between all of this? Project names cannot contain spaces. So if you do put spaces in here, it's telling you right here. And this, this is specific to coding. You cannot have spaces. There has to be something in every single space. So these little lines are called underscores. Okay. These are called underscores. And that underscore means there is a space. That underscore has a definite meaning. It means there is a space in between those letters. So when a another program reads it, it's going to know that those are spaces between those letters. So when you get your last name, 
your first initial, the assignment, which is 111, and then your class period, then you'll click OK. If there's a problem, see, now look, mine tells me I have a problem. Williams A 111 A1 already exists. You cannot create another project with the same name. Click OK. So I want to do A1. And I'm going to put the date in here. Now, what if I put a backslash? Can't do it. Won't let you. Because that's an invalid character. It's an invalid character because a backslash is used in computer coding to designate something. So what if we put a dash? Oh, can't do it. What if we put a period? Invalid character. Product names can only contain letters, numbers, and underscore. So let's put an underscore in here. That is a not, that's a shift. And then right next to the zero. There you go. There's my new project. Why is it not letting me pause? I want to pause. It's not letting me pause. Okay. All right. Now it's going to give us a little video. Did anybody get this little pop-up video? No? Okay. Which one's on who? Oh, over there in the box. Okay. Yeah. Where can I put posters over here in seven, Um, anywhere you want to. Okay. Right next to the bathroom doors really is the best place to put a poster. Okay. See that clear? See that clear white box back there on the black table? Okay. Yeah, right there. Up right. yourself. Yeah. Okay. So I, for you, you would hit do not show again. I'm going to hit continue so that my next class doesn't get it. What does this look like? And I know you all are jonesing to get them back, <laughs> but what does this look like? A phone. Where's the, where is the location that we as humans with new technology use most, if not all of our apps on our phone? On our phones. Yeah. All right. So I want you to take a look at the side here. These are your user interfaces. These are your user interfaces that you're going to code with. And there's a button checkbox. You can read through all of these. Does any of this look familiar? When do you use a button on your own phone? What do you? The phone icon. That's like the easiest and simplest. The text icon. You want to open up text and start texting. Okay. You want to get a hold of somebody on Insta? Tap that Insta icon. Yeah, you tap that Insta icon. All right. Checkbox. We've done one on here. Checkboxes. A date picker. What do you think a date picker does? Exactly what it says. Picks a date. Figures out a date for you. Notifier. Who has a notifier? Who... When you get a message and you get that little pop-up that says that you've gotten a message or somebody's posted something from, uh, you know, that you follow either on X, formerly known as Twitter, or I think he, he did that on purpose, you know, 
Um, or you get a notifier that says somebody that you're following on Insta just shared a video, TikTok, any of that. A notifier, you got a text message. That little notifier pops up on your phone. That's this right here. Okay. So there's a lot of functions in here. And this is just your user interface, your layout, the layout, horizontal arrangement. So is it going to go side by side horizontally? Have you ever used an app where it's had columns going up and down or a game? Okay. Have you ever used anything where everything's horizontally? Yeah. This is how, this is how you do it. So you, you have horizontal, you have vertical, you can set your own table arrangement. All right. So if you want something to show up in the top left and in the bottom right, that's where you'd use a table arrangement because you would have movement there. Okay. So if you're doing, if you're making a puzzle app, you might use a table arrangement. Uh, this entire column, I forgot to mention, this entire column is called a palette, just like an artist palette, because you're choosing different things. So we have media. Media is exactly what you would expect it to be. Camcorder, camera, image picker. You know, do you ever use anything that says go download a phone or go download a picture? Okay. Player sound, sound recorder. Right now I'm using a sound recorder and a video recorder to record this video in case you need it in the future. Text to speech. How many times, cause I've done it and I got to remember to slow down when I talk. How many times have you hit record? to send a verbal message to somebody when you text them. That's text to speech. Okay. It, uh, MIT app inventor also has a translator as a video player drawing an animation. This is what, um, we're going to be working with and you're going to learn about this right away. We're going to use a lot of this in like the first four or five lessons activities. Okay. So a canvas, what is an artist canvas? It's the same thing on here. An artist canvas is the space that you're doing your artwork. It's the space you're doing your drawing. Okay. So this is our space that we're doing our work on this artist canvas right on the screen. There's maps, charts, sensors. You can even program a thermometer. Social contact picker, email, phone. If you want to, if, um, if you want to make a survey and make a survey app, then you would probably want to use some of these socials storage. Where's this going to store? Is it going to store to the cloud? Is it going to make a data file? Is it going to make a general file? Do you want it to convert to a spreadsheet? Uh, tiny DB that stands for tiny da database, tiny web database, tiny, <laughs> tiny DB. <laughs> now that'd be tiny B DG <laughs> activity starter. This is connectivity, you know, activity starter, Bluetooth, Bluetooth server, client server, serial web. Do you want it to go to the web? In middle school, did anybody have a robotics program that had Legos? You did a Lego computer program or Lego robotics. I'm curious if this Lego Mindstorm, this is new. I'm curious if this would work with the robotics and you can control the Lego robotics from your phone. If you program something through here, I personally don't have any experience with the Lego robotics. I want to learn. Uh, these are experimental items that MIT app inventor are working on chat bot, firebase image bot. 
And an extension. Do you want to import a extension of something, another program someplace else? So this is all in your palette. For our use, user interface, layout, media, drawing and animation, and sensors are going to be the ones that we're going to use most while we're learning block coding in MIT App Inventor. Has anybody ever heard of the university MIT? This is the big science university MIT App Inventor, and this is free to anybody and everybody. They've created this. Okay. Uh, viewer right here. What's it going to look like? You're only setting up what it's going to look like on this screen right here. Components. As you add components, so a layout, we're going to want drawing and animation. We're going to end up needing a canvas, and I just want to show you this real quick. So I'm going to drop my canvas over here. See how it drops in components? Okay. Pay attention to how this is indented in and how everything falls in place as we're scroll as we're creating our apps because it's going to be very important when you start hand coding in Python and you start typing commands. Okay. So just pay attention to that. Upload media upload. If you have a picture that you need to upload, which we're going to have first thing you have to do is you're going to have, you're going to have to put it in your file. So I'm going to show you how to download that from your computer. I'm going to show you how to download that from the PLTW source files and then upload it so that you can put it here. Properties right here. Properties. This is what it's going to look like, how it's going to work, how big, if you have, if you have text in there, how big do you want the font height? So right now I have my canvas. And you'll notice on height, it'll say fill parent. So if I click fill parent, what do you think is going to happen? Anybody? Orion, what do you think is going to happen when I click? Orion, what do you think is going to happen when I click fill parent over here in properties for the canvas? You'll notice canvas is, high, is dark green. So how do you, how's that going to work? What's going to happen when I click fill parent? You're, you ready? Yep. Takes it up and down because I'm working with the height width. If I click fill parent, yep. Goes all the way to the side width. There's going to be a lot of things that you're going to have to fill parent. There's going to be other things that you're only going to want your height to be 50%. So that only makes it half the screen. Again, this is all we're just designing right now. We're not even coding yet. We're just design, des, ugh, designing. Okay. You can change your paint color when it gets down to it and we start doing it. Tap threshold. Don't worry about that. That's a standard tap threshold uh, that, you know, when you tap your phone, that's your tap threshold. Alignment. Do we want it centered? There's going to be some things like text boxes. Do you want it centered? Do you want it to the left? Do you want it to the right? Visible. There's going to be some things that are going to be invisible. You don't want the person using the program to see it. Okay. I'm going to add to this little instruction right here. We're going to do what's called a split screen. So if you're on a desktop, you can do this on a Chromebook. Also, you're going to grab, you're going to click, hold the mouse, drag that tab out and let it go. So now you can see it on top of the other one, shrink the other tab, the other screen that you have. And then look, Click the tab you want to open. You can have your instructions on one side and 
what you're working on on the other. Look at that. I got a double screen there. Okay. So I'm going to put, since we're not all in PLTW yet, um, you know, that, that's got to do with, with individual schedules changing and then the connection between, I mean, there's a lot of background logistics that why you all aren't in PLTW. Um, some of you are, some of you aren't, but I'm going to make a copy of this and put it in your Google classroom. I do not expect you to read it before next class period, but in the future, I do want you to read the lesson before we ever even started. And uh, like I ex was explaining a couple of days ago, in the beginning, we're going to do everything together. Or I'm going to have a video that uh, you'll be able to watch and pause when you need to. But in the beginning, I'm walking you through everything. Okay. Uh, again, this right here, this DL stands for distance learning. And it's really strange because we're, we're computer coding here and we're using MIT App Inventor. Virtually everything is a distance learning. You can do it anywhere. Here's our cre uh, career connection, computer science and human development. Read this. You will have some career connection work that you'll be doing. Our essential question is why is it important to become a creator and not just a user? How does block based programming make life easier when coding? These are our questions. You don't, you, you don't need to know the answer right now. So these are the questions we're going to answer while we're doing this. Our essential concepts are programming language abstraction. What's abstraction? I can't hear you. You ask Google for it. <laughs> What's an abstraction? Well, let's look up the definition of abstraction in art. Let's just ask our AI right here. What is abstraction? Here we go. What's abstraction in computer science? Abstraction means the same thing, anything. In general, it's a fundamental concept in computer science and software development. Abstraction is art. Does anybody know an abstract artist? Isn't it Picasso? Yeah. You know how he's like got like one big eye up, you know, up on the top right, and then he's got this big nose down on the left, and it's all kind of blocky, but you can still tell what it is. It's still a person's face. Okay. Abstract. Something very abstract. It's the same principle in computer coding and computer science. It's abstract. While you're looking at it, while you're looking at it, it looks all funky, but you can still tell what it is. User-centered design, iterative design and debugging, and event-driven programming. Event-driven programming. Your resources for this one is your App Inventor debugging guide. Here's our App Inventor debugging guide. There's a little link. I'll give that to you also. Challenge app. This is for if you get done. Okay. Your digital doodle app icon. See, I clicked this and it gave me a zip file. You'll be doing the same thing, whether it's on your Chromebook or it's on the desktop. So I'm going to open my zip file. I'm going to wait for it to load. So, and on a desktop right here, it says extract all. You'll click extract all. You'll decide a location you want it to go to. I don't want mine to go to my downloads. I don't have it. I probably saved. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so we have our, I apologize for having to pause it. So I want to tell it where I want it to save to. And I want to save it to my documents. And what I want you to do is you're going to create a new folder. You're going to click new folder and you're going to title this CSE. Some of you may find that there are, is already a CSE folder on your desktop. Uh, definitely if you're on your Chromebook, you want to make a CSE folder. Click select folder. And you'll see now that it says that it's going to my teacher file, Angela Williams CSE. And then I click extract. And there's our digital doodle icon. We already have it. So now that we've uh, looked at our, I'm going to minimize that. I can close this out because I already have it. Oop, what else do I have open here? Oh, let me close that out again. So now we have our icon, which is this guy right here. Boop. That's that guy right there. This is your overview. I want you to read it. But wait, Miss Williams, what do these dark words with these little text box next to them mean? This is your vocabulary. Yes, you're going to keep vocabulary. If you click on this, PLTW is going to tell you the definition. When you're doing your vocabulary on your vocabulary form, this is the definition that you will write in under your meaning slash definition column for that word. For those of you that have me for um, engineering, same thing. You're going to have vocabulary to keep for every class. MIT App Inventor, App Inventor website, we're already on it. Here's your user story. Your user story is um, a shopping list, a to-do list of what the person that you're making the app for wants. So you are the programmer. You are designing it for somebody else, the imaginary customer. All right. This is their shopping list. Their user story is their shopping list. These are the things that they want on there. There's a user story for everything that you're going to program. If you're programming something just for yourself, then you're not only the creator, but you're the user. You're going to have a description like that too. Okay. Okay. So, and sorry for the pause again, your initial backlog breakdown. This is a to-do list. What do I have to do? What do we, what do we need to program? We need to program the user needs to be able to the user, the person using the program that you're creating, they need to be able to push a button to take a picture. Okay. That's easy. They need to draw on that picture. They need to clear the picture. They need to change the color they draw with. And in here, these are our instructions says if time permits, because we are in a schedule. Uh, and they need to be able to change the line width that they're drawing with. Okay. So you have a lot of extra things that you're going to have to do. Design terminology. Again, this is for um, this lesson and user story, user centered and user interface. That is something that you're going to be used to doing and listening to the whole time. In PLTW, if you want to highlight something and you want to say, oh, I need to remember that you do a, you do a left click drag, and you can highlight. If you want to left click drag, even though you've highlighted, you can take the highlight out or you can add a note. Uh, I'm just going to write hello so you can see it. When you see this little icon, you just click someplace else. 
When you see this little note icon right here, that means you've written a note about what you've highlighted. This is what your temp chart, actually your temp chart, it's going to say term, example, meaning, picture, and then you're going to have synonym and antonym. I want you to know the synonyms and antonyms of each term of each vocabulary word. We've already done number one. Set up your account in MIT App Inventor. We have already done number one. If you have um, an Android, then you're going to want to download when you get home, you're going to want to download this MIT A12 companion. Actually, it's an A12. Oh my Lord. MIT A1 two companion. AI. You got it? AI. If you have Apple you want to and you want to go to your OS, you want to download MIT App Inventor. You can go into your Play Stores and you can find those there. You don't have to use this link. So um, if you think about it, download those because that's how you're going to test your, your program that you're writing. And you're going to test. That's how I'm going to test it. And then you can test it at home. We already did number two, start a new project. We already talked about the designer view on Tuesday. You're going to get your notebooks. Whenever you see a pencil icon, that means they want you to take a note. They want you to take a note. Your designer view. We went over the, the palette, the viewer, the components. We went over all of that properties. Anytime you're in PLTW and you see you hover over something, you see an eyeglass with a plus sign on it. That means you can open that up. You can click that image and it'll pop out and you can enlarge it. Whoop. And you can take a look at what it says. Just click the X to turn it off. So before we get started right here on doing this programming, I'm going to let you guys experiment and look around. Okay. Error alerts. If you ever get an error, it gives you suggestions on what to do. Who would like to drag these three things to your phone screen? Who wants to start? You ready? So it says, remember from the user story that this app will need the following components. So these are the three primary components that we need. So we need a button to activate the camera. That's under user interface. And how you get this is you just click, hold, and drag. Oop, I didn't get my button on there. This is how I usually, oop, not like that. I want this one. This is how I usually have my screen, especially when I'm working with you guys, working with the class. So we know we need a, we know we need a button. So I added a button. We know I need a canvas. I've already added a canvas. I've already drug a canvas over there. Scroll down. Whoop, I went the wrong way. Canvas is under drawing and animation, the one in the middle. So you're going to click, drag that over here and let it go. I already put one there. And you're going to need a camera. Camera is up in media, not the camcorder, the camera. So you're going to click and drag that to the canvas. Now you notice camera doesn't show up up here on your phone screen. It's a non-visible component. It's a non-visible component. So you're not going to see it here, but you are going to see it in your component line. 
So if everybody could get to this point and your, um, your screen doesn't have to look like mine. If you want your button on, oh, on top of your canvas, whoop. Oh, come on. It's not going to let me move it. Normally, oh, they fixed that. Okay, so they used to be able to let me move it. So drag there. See that dark blue line that showed up? Watch. Boop. So my button is top on top of my canvas area that I set. And it changed in your component order. This is very important. Your component order is very important. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, when this formats, I'm going to post this in a Google Classroom also for you because it's got a lots of little tidbits. When you are watching this, this is through Screencastify. So um, you it should not be blocked because I've already talked to technology about making sure it's open. You got three minutes, Kenneth, sit down. All right. If anybody has any problems, email me. Okay. My plan times on A days is A4. My plan time on B days is B7. Okay. All right. That was a lot. That was a lot of me talking. You can watch this video anytime you want to.